Anybody who doesn't believe in miracles wasn't watching TV last night. The Chicago Cubs are in the World Series. Pretty nice. You know, this Jesus character, never quite figure him out. Every time you think you got him, he changes. He's a little tricky. And in today's scripture reading, he's very tricky. He tells us this parable of these two men. There's a Pharisee and a tax collector. Now, a Pharisee was sort of a, a religious leader who knew the Jewish law inside and out, backwards and forwards, knew exactly what he had to do each day. And each day he would assume his place in the temple, which we can assume is somewhere right in the front, and let everybody see him. And then he stood there and listen to this. He spoke this prayer to himself. Not to God, but to himself. Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of the world. Well, thank God for me too. Oh, jeez. Wouldn't want to be like the rest of the world, would we? He did everything right. He fasted twice a week and paid all his tithing to the temple. Then you get this other guy standing in the back, the tax collector, who was a hated man. Ha tax collector had betrayed his own people. He was working for the Roman government. He was taking a share out of everyone's pocket. And he was a hated, hated man. I was going to name some of the politicians, but it's dangerous to name any of them today. You know? So what do we have here? Who's the good guy? As you read this thing, and we've read it probably hundreds of times in our lives, the natural tendency is to side with the tax collector. He's humble. And that, I think, is the way we're supposed to approach the Scripture. But the reality is neither one of them are very good. Neither one of them are great examples of a holy lifestyle. And that, I think, is what the Lord is talking about when he talks about comparing ourselves to other people. Don't do it. When I started in the seminary, the first lesson we ever had, the rector stood up there and said, as you go through this experience, do not compare yourself to anyone else. Because there's always going to be smart, smarter people. There's always going to be people who aren't quite as smart. There's going to be faster people or slower people or more handsome people, though I, I doubted that. You know. There's always going to be someone to compare yourself to. And what Jesus is telling us in the scripture is stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop judging other people and stop finding fault with them. You know, there's a story in one of the, the things I read about this gospel. And he said it's a, it was a story about an Irishman taking a cross-country train ride. And as he went by one day, he saw this magnificent white cottage brilliantly white with a thatched roof and just a romantic kind of Irish place. And it touched him and it stuck with him for a long time. A few months later, he was taking the same trip and couldn't wait to see this cottage again. He wanted to see what it was like, get a better look at it. But that day that he rode by on the train, it had snowed. A brilliant new snow had fallen. And when he saw the cottage, he was disappointed. Because in relation to the snow, the white of the cottage was sort of drab, almost gray. Nothing thrilling about it. When it stood by itself, it was brilliant. As soon as you compared it to another white, it was not so good. And I think the message here is for all of us that we are that white cottage. We can sit back and congratulate ourselves and tell ourselves how good we are. 
We can say all the good things. We tithe, we fast, we come to church on Sunday, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But don't compare that to the person next to you. Compare that to the God, to the man who we worship, and what does he want us to do? How close are we to him? Our relation to our fellow man is of no meaning whatsoever. We're all struggling. We're all broken. The proper attitude is that of the tax collector. Humility. Lord, have mercy on me. In this year of mercy, it's great to have this scripture reading here because it reminds us that we need God help, God's help constantly. Each one of us has our own list of faults, of foibles, of things we do wrong. Each one of us in our own way struggles to do better and usually fails. We need God's grace to help us through these things. We need God's grace to welcome us back and to keep us close to him. And the only way we're going to keep God's grace flowing is with humble asking. If we've learned nothing else through this year of mercy, we've learned that the Lord always welcomes us back. He's eager to have us back. All we have to do is ask. The question on each one of us should be, have we asked? Are we humble enough to admit that we can't do it ourselves? We're not strong enough, we're not determined enough, whatever it is, we need God's help. Will you ask for it?